Bonjour. In this video, I'm going to address a question that I get fairly often, and that is, what is the optimal serving temperature for a rosé? And this is a very important question because temperature does make a very big difference in your tasting experience. Um, and not just for rosé, but also for red and white wine. And if you Google the question, you know, best serving temperature for rosé or best serving temperature for wine, the answers you're going to get kind of run the gamut because everyone has their own opinion about it. And um, my opinion might surprise you. Um, if you're interested in this topic and you'd like to optimize your tasting experience, not only with rosé, but also with any kind of wine that you drink, keep watching. So let's start with the perfect serving temperature for rosé because the same principle is going to also apply for red and white wine. So the short answer to the question is, as far as what's the ideal serving temperature for rosé is, it depends. All wines are different. Okay, like if you take a red wine from Spain and you compare it with one from Australia or Argentina, they're very different, right? So each wine is going to have its own optimal serving temperature. And so let's look at how to find the perfect serving temperature for each type of wine. With rosé, I normally keep it in my fridge. So that's four degrees Celsius or about um, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I, I serve my rosé straight from the fridge. Now, before you start having a conniption fit in the comments, just hear me out, okay? Hear me out. Because yes, serving a wine at four degrees Celsius or 39 degrees Fahrenheit straight from the fridge is too cold, okay? But what I like to do is I like to serve it straight from the fridge and then I like to uh, appreciate how it evolves as it warms up in the glass. So I take an, a, a first sip and then as, you know, as I, I the evening goes along and, and I, you know, I'm holding it and I'm sipping on it, over time it's gonna heat up gradually and I'm gonna be able to notice how it's evolving in the glass. Wines have different types of aroma compounds and gustatory compounds, phenols and, and thiols and um, what are the other ones? Uh, terpenes, all, ki all kinds of different stuff. And so um, each molecule has a different level of detectableness, which is what we call the olfactory detection threshold which basically means the amount of that molecule that needs to be present in order for your olfactory system or your sense of smell to be able to pick up on it. And also all of these aromatic compounds have different levels of volatility. So depending on the level of volatility, the compound is gonna start getting released into the atmosphere at a different temperature. Um, so there are some compounds that you're gonna um, be able to appreciate through your nose and other compounds that you're gonna appreciate through your taste buds once the wine is in your mouth, okay? And the notes that you're gonna appreciate with your taste buds are things like bitterness, sweetness, um, the alcohol, um, the mineral notes, like kind of saltiness, um, you're gonna get those kind of notes, um, acidity, that kind of thing. So your uh, olfactory and gustatory systems are going to perceive different compounds at varying temperatures. For example, bitterness is more detectable at a lower temperature. So the colder the wine is, the more you're gonna be able to detect the bitterness, right? And then as the wine starts warming up, um, you're gonna detect less of the bitterness and then you're gonna be able to appreciate some of the other notes like the, uh, like the mineral notes. And now don't confuse bitterness with acidity, right? Lemons are acidic, but they're not bitter. Bitterness is more of like the taste that you get with like an IPA, Indian Pale Ale, or um, or like coffee. Um, so anyway, that's why I like to enjoy the wine as it evolves in the glass and as it starts heating up in the glass, okay? Because then I can fully appreciate all the different layers as they start expressing themselves as the temperature starts changing. So first, the most volatile, aromatically, the most, most volatile compounds are gonna express themselves first. So they're gonna be, gonna be the first ones to kind of dissipate in the atmosphere. And then once those kind of dissipate, then you're gonna start uh, appreciating more of the secondary and tertiary notes. 
So that's kind of why I like to just kind of let it heat up because as it heats up and as I'm as I'm kind of sipping it, I, I start noticing different things over time, right? And I start I start noticing how it evolves. Um, I do the same thing with red wine and white wine. So with white wine, we also keep that in the fridge, four degrees Celsius, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, for red, we don't keep it in the fridge, of course. So for red, we have a um, like a, a wine fridge. It's a special wine fridge that controls the temperature and humidity for red wines. And that we keep at 13 degrees Celsius, which is about... 55 degrees Fahrenheit and again so it, at that temperature the red is going to kind of be closed in on itself you know it's going to kind of be like closed up and tight right and um, as it starts warming up and starts interacting with the oxygen in the atmosphere it's going to start releasing the primary secondary and tertiary notes aromatically in, in the gustatory one so um it's just an amazing way, in my opinion, to experience wine because it's almost like you get to go on a journey with it as it evolves in the glass. So the sweet spot in terms of this perfect serving temperature for a particular wine is that point at which that wine in particular is the most pleasurable for you. So this obviously is going to be very subjective and it's going to uh, differ depending on the person and also depending on the wine. Um, so say that you really love the volatile theols in a rosé. Um, some of the volatile theols that you find in a Provence rosé are going to be like the um, grapefruit and um, passion fruit notes. I actually wrote a whole blog article about this on my blog. If you go to my website, um, there's an entire article about volatile theols. <laughs> um, if you're like a, a chemistry nerd and you want to you know about that kind of stuff. Um, but if you really like those kind of like passion fruit and grapefruit kind of notes, um, then you're going to want to serve the rosé a little bit on the cooler side because um, those are the most volatile ones. So they're going to start expressing themselves first. And if you let the wine get too warm, they're going to dissipate into the, into the atmosphere more quickly right so if you kind of want to preserve them a little bit more you're going to want to keep the rosé a little bit colder but but say you want less of the bitterness and you want um more of the like secondary and tertiary notes or you want to like appreciate better the kind of the finer aspects of the balance between the minerality and the acidity and all that kind of stuff then you're going to want to let your wine warm up a little bit more you don't want it to warm up too much right because you want the rosé to be cool and refreshing so you need it to be cool. But, um, you know, the bottom line is the optimal temperature is going to depend on the person and also the wine. So just, you know, serve it cold, let it warm up in the glass. And then when you find the sweet spot, you're going to be like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is perfect the way it is right here, you know. So anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, let me know in the comments what topics uh, you'd like me to cover next or what other questions you might have about rosé. Until then, bonne journée, have a great day.